23, it is the parable of the sower. So listen to our scripture. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. And then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, most of you know that being a farmer means that you have to live a life of faith, right? To farm means to have faith. Many, there are many variables that influence a farmer's ability to reap a harvest. And they can either reap a bountiful harvest or a slim pickings crop. And weather patterns, soil conditions, right amounts of water and fertilizer, quality of the seeds and the faithfulness of the laborers in the field, all of these factor into what the crop is going to look like and thus what profits are going to be earned. Now some of these factors are under the farmer's control, but others are not. Who knows if there's going to be a flood coming and, and everything is washed away? Who knows whether there's going to be a drought and everything's going to dry up and all be lost? Millions of farmers would, throughout the world have to exercise faith each and every year, each and every growing season as they go into this process of farming. Well, today we're looking at the first of Jesus' parables, and as recorded in the, in the Gospels, and he's telling a story about a farmer, a sower out in the field. And so here is the sower, and he's out scattering the seed. Now imagine, picture, picture the, the seed in your mind. Jesus is there by the Sea of Galilee. He's there beside the, the sea, and there are so many people gathered along the shoreline that it's crowded, and so he goes and he sits the boat, and the people stand on the shore and he begins to teach them. And in the distance, you can see a, a farmer on the hill as he's grabbing his seed and spreading it, broadcasting it all across his field. There he is, and as they watch the farmer work, Jesus begins to teach a lesson about life. As Jesus is teaching, the farming farmer is acting out the message that he is teaching, and the sower has this bag of seed that he's broadcasting across the ground. And as he does so, the seed is falling on all types of ground. You see ground that's, that's hard and ground that's, that's uh, thorny and full of weeds, all kinds of ground. And in rural Palestine, in the day of Jesus, they didn't have fancy tractors and planters and all of the things we have today in, in order to plow and, and to produce grain. What they did was they came, the farmer would carry around a bag of seed and he would broadcast it along on these long paths of ground. And so then afterwards, 
for us in our lives. First of all, we, we can look at the sower or the farmer. And in our, our explanation, Jesus tells us that the sower, the one who sowed the good seed, is the son of man. Jesus is telling us that he is the one who is out there sowing the seed, uh, the seed which is his word. He, he's telling all of the world about the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of, of heaven, of God. And he's telling everyone about it. And that is the seed. And he's sowing it everywhere, liberally, extravagantly, generously, everywhere, everywhere. And the field, that's his, the world for him. Jesus is, then comes along and he's describing for the disciples and those around who are listening what it, the, the responses are to his sowing of the word. And by doing so, he describes the inner geography of us as human beings, the various landscapes of our human heart. We, see, we have seen these in others, and we've discovered sometimes in our own selves what kind of soil we think we are. But we are rarely just one type of soil. Most often, at some time in our life, we've been all four of the types of soil that Jesus has described. We are differing, uh, we are in different places at different times, and the four styles or the four descriptions are how we live and how we relate to God and to others around us. Now, Jesus tells us that the hard, hard, hard soil person is one whose heart is calloused. It's the person or the seed the seed doesn't penetrate. God's word does not penetrate your heart. And the evil one comes along and snatches it away. These are the people who keep God at arm's length. That they won't let God's word penetrate their lives. Jesus says that they are ever eyeing, but never perceiving. Ever hearing, but never understanding. And so they, they do not allow God's word to be planted in their lives. Now the rocky soul soil person, Jesus says, is the one who joyfully receives Jesus and his word and then quickly abandons Jesus when there are persecutions or struggles that come into their lives. This person wants God for what God can do for them, but they don't want to have to pay the price of what it means to be a disciple. And so they, when an illness or a problem or a crisis enters their life, then, then they quickly abandon God and, and they become cynical and fall away. Now, we can call those Alcatraz or Christians. They have a lot of fizz at the beginning, but they pretty much fizzle out at the end. Now, Jesus then goes on to describe the thorny soil people. And he says they are the ones that are distracted and worried about worldly wealth. They're distracted by the world. And so the word is not given priority in their lives. They're all about what's going on in the world around them. And this kind of person is usually overly tolerant uh, of the weeds or the sin in the world, which makes it impossible for God's word to grow within them. They don't take sin seriously. And so they think that following Jesus is just another burden that they would have to take on in their lives. And then they give their time and their effort and their energy and their creativity to all the wrong things of the world. Jesus tells the disciples that they should be paying attention to these descriptions of where the seed never takes root. The seed that Jesus is planting, the word of the kingdom. In other words, Jesus' message of the kingdom of God, this vision of how Jesus' ministry that's coming into the world and what it will do for our world. And then he begins to talk about the good soil. In the one who takes the word deep into their heart, and then the result, Jesus says, is amazing. It's amazing, he says, but as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. This is the person that understands that to be a disciple of Christ, it takes commitment and it takes effort. And it involves being able to, to get to know God better each and every day. They want to grow and increase in their knowledge of God and in their relationship with God. Now we've met people who uh, live out the parable of the one who is the good soil. We all know those, those saints of, of the church, great and small, who have come and who have contributed greatly to the cause of the gospel and the mission of the church in general. They scattered with astonishing liberality the seeds that have grown in mysterious ways in all kinds of places. And we see that germinating within the hearts of the people who have experienced it. We see it in, in the, the heart of the person who says they have no time, but then they take the time to go and serve soup in a homeless shelter. 
We see it in the, the retiree who says that they don't have time, but then finds how much fun it is to go and sit in the library and help the young children to read. We see it in that youth as it buds in the youth as they go about this mission trip, and the mission trip becomes more a call, a vocation, rather than a vacation. So we see the seeds budding and growing in people around us. But just as Jesus said, the seeds are scattered, and the word does not always flourish everywhere it is given, whether it's because of sin or apathy or simply temptation or from the world. Some folks simply will not hear the word and take it into their hearts. We can also name in our, in our own minds some of those people we know that fit this description of the soil that never completely receives God's word. And for a variety of reasons, they may not have an interest in faith in keeping it, living, out, living it out, or even confessing it. For every baptism we do in the church, for every confirmation class that we do, for every parish record book we've got with members in it, throughout the church universal across the world, it seems pretty apropos that we hear about the, the crop failures that are out there. But that's not the only thing that God wants us to to be thinking about. Yes, Jesus is telling us in this parable that, in, in fact, inviting us to be self-reflective and to examine the kind of life that we are leading. But he's also asking us to go and look deeper at this story, to grow, go even deeper into what the meaning of his parable. All, all, as different as these four soils Jesus describes are, they hold two things in common. The seeds and the sower. The sower sows the same seeds in all four types of soil, in, 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 with equal toil, with equal hope, and with equal generosity. And the sower does not evaluate the soil's quality or its potential, but that he leaves no soil unsown, no ground declared undeserving of the sower's seed. This parable is not about the quality of the dirt that we have, it's about the quality of God's divine grace, of the divine sower who is sowing seeds everywhere. We want to look at what kind of dirt we are, but God simply wants us to understand that he wants to sow into our lives. Whether we're ready to receive it or not, God wants to be a part of our lives. And no life, no person, no soil is going to be left unsown. There will be seed continually spread throughout the world. Fred Craddock, in one of his sermons, talked, turned this parable into a very careful reminder for the people who were listening that we should not get caught up in labeling folks as to whether they are going to be a crop failure or not. He says that it, it's a reminder for us that God is doing the work, not us, so that we are best to leave things alone. We should look not at crop failure. Instead, those that we think might be crop failures, instead might turn out differently and become the very seed that catches on and creates a wonderful yield when the time for the harvest comes. Now, Craddock observed that no farmer puts a seed in the soil and then screams at it, Come on! Get up! Stand up! Get up! We don't do that. What we do we say a prayer, we step back, and we let the process happen. It's not for us to question whether the crop will fail or whether it's going to have a huge yield. We cannot try shouting at the seed or the soil to, to make it to perform. Uh, but again, it, it, it's all about that curious mystery where we cannot predict what is going to happen in the world. But we can only listen to what Jesus says and then what he says about his word is that with attentiveness to God, the great things become possible. And so some of us want to judge the word, judge the crop, even before we start to scatter our seed. Others of us think that the soil will never be good enough, and so we don't even bother to try spreading the seed at all. Others of us are too worried about the fact that there are too many birds and too many thorns and too many weeds too many rocks for us to contend with. Instead, what we should be doing is letting the sower do his work. You see, how many of you ever heard
heard Jesus wringing his hands and worrying about who accepted his message and who didn't. He didn't. What he did was he spread the seed, he spread his word across the world, and he instructed his disciples to do the same. And if people didn't listen, he told them to kick the dirt off their heels and to move on, just to continue to keep spreading and, and to forget about the birds and the rocks and the thorns, but to just let the gospel seeds fly. And that's what he's telling us to do, to broadcast that gospel seed that God has given us to distribute and leave the harvest to God. So here's the good news. Okay? When the world is in its final days, there will be an overwhelming gathering of the people of God from all over the world. There will be people from every nation, of every tongue and race, and they will make their way to the city of God. And the good seed will have multiplied exponentially and cause the word to grow in all places, everywhere around our world. So let anyone with ears hear and let anyone with the gospel seed respond, giving thanks to our God and our Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so your questions for today. In many of the parables that Jesus told, he related them to agricultural themes. If Jesus were teaching in this area, do you think he'd be teaching in the same ways, or would he try something different? The only variable in the parable is uh, the soil. So what gives us such confidence in the sower and the seed that they are perfect? And on most days, which soil represents the relationship between you and God's word? And why did Jesus conclude his parable with he who has ears to hear, let him hear? 